Yum, yum. In this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate how you can create a believable brush metal material. And I'll be using Blender for this demonstration so that potentially anyone can follow along. But this is not a Blender specific quick tip. The concepts in this video can be applied to any 3D software. So I'm starting with a basic metal shader, which you can see here. So it's set to a light gray color. The metallic value is set all the way to one and the roughness is set to 0.4. So with these values in place, let's do a quick test render. So as you can see, we have a reasonably believable metal, except there are no textures on the material. So we don't have any sense that this metal has been machined. So with that render done, let's switch to slot two and I'm going to return to my scene. So the first step will be to add some anisotropy in order to stretch out the reflections. And I want to control the direction of the stretching with a texture map. And in order to do this in Blender, I need to do a couple of things. First of all, I need to plug a tangent node into the tangent input just below the anisotropic values. And in the tangent node, I need to set the tangent to UV map. Then I can take an image. In this case, it's this linear gradient that you see here. And I'll need to connect that to the anisotropic rotation input of my material. But on the way, I'm going to add a map range node so that I can control the direction of the stretching. And with that in place, all I need to do is to increase the anisotropic value. And you can see in my preview that's stretching out the reflections beautifully. And I can change the direction of the stretching using this map range node. Basically, this second minimum value here in the map range node is going to rotate the map in 90 degree increments. So if I set it to zero, that's no rotation at all. And you can see that the reflections are now stretched vertically. And if I want to rotate it by 90 degrees, I need to do a quarter turn. So that's 0 0.25. And that's now going to stretch the reflections horizontally. Next, if I switch to the chrome top material, which is applied to the lid of the coffee pot, we have a very similar material applied here. But in this case, I'm going to want the scratches to be circular rather than linear. So instead of using a linear gradient to dry the anisotropy, I'm going to use a circular one, which you can see here. And this is also set up in the exact same way as the main chrome material. So all I need to do here is to increase the anisotropic value. And you can see we get the stretching of the reflections on the lid. But this time they're being stretched in a circular manner. So with these changes in place, let's do a quick render. So in terms of the reflections on the metal, this result is much nicer. If I return to the original render in slot one, you can see that this result is very different. But the reflections are only half the story. We're going to need to add some actual scratches in order for the material to have that tactile sense of believability. So I'm going to return to Blender and the obvious solution would be to add a bump map. So I have this map here, which is just some scratches I created in Photoshop. I'm going to take its output and plug that into the normal input of my material. And that's been applied to the lid of the coffee pot. Let me select the main chrome material and do exactly the same thing. Take the output of this bump node and connect it to the normal input of my material. With that done, I'm going to open the render window again. Let's switch to slot three and fire off another render. And while this might be a bit of an improvement over the previous render, you can see, especially if we zoom in, that the effect is just way too strong. In my opinion, this simply doesn't feel believable. And that's because applying the scratches as a bump map or even a normal map is going to give a result that is just way too coarse. So let's switch back into Blender and try a different approach. I'm going to disconnect the bump map from the texture node. And instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this image and I'm going to connect it to the roughness channel instead. I'll select the lid of the coffee pot and do exactly the same thing. Let's disconnect the bump map and connect the image into the roughness channel. And then if I return to the render window, let's switch to a new slot and I'll render the image again. And you can see that with the texture applied as a roughness map rather than a bump map, we get a result that is much nicer because it's much more subtle. Essentially, the texture is just catching a few highlights to give a sense of the scratches in the metal, but it's not overbearing in the way that it was when the same texture was applied as a bump map. And the texture map is actually stretching the reflections in a similar way to the anisotropic map. However, using the roughness texture on its own is not going to be enough. And I can demonstrate that quite simply. So let me switch to slot five. And if I go back to Blender and simply disable the anisotropic maps, and render the image again. You can see that the scratches are still applied to the metal, although the effect is much harder to see now, but it's just not as effective as when we had the roughness map and the anisotropy working together. So to quickly recap the main points of this video, you start with a simple metal material. 
The first step will be to add some anisotropy so that you get stretching of the reflections and you'll need to make sure that you use texture maps in order to control the direction of the stretching. And then you'll want to add some scratches as texture maps and these scratches should be applied as roughness maps because applying them as bump maps is going to give results that are too coarse. But when applied as roughness maps, these scratch maps are going to create a really nice brush metal effect. So now you know how to create great looking brush metals. But if you want to save time and just grab materials like this one as off the shelf presets, then take a look at Vizpack Products, which is a material library that includes several variations on this material, as well as over 160 other physically accurate materials. The material library has been thoroughly researched and all of the metals have physically accurate reflective properties, including the color and strength of their reflections, so that the subtle differences between nickel, aluminium or stainless steel are accurately represented in the materials. With Vizpack products, you can confidently use all the materials knowing that they are accurate representations of their real life counterparts. There are versions of the library for Blender and for Modo. So take the guesswork out of material creation with Vizpack products. You can follow the link in the description to buy the library. Yum, yum!